violence and other kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. And let's get into the video. Eight, the U.S. will open its borders to travelers from other countries, but only if they've been fully vaccinated. So we know that's a lie. We've seen the immigration. We've seen the influx of illegal immigrants into the country. But if somebody wants to fly through here and, you know, legally have a good time, they've got to do the procedure. Very hypocritical. Um, you know, we have these Haitian migrants at the border. We have these um, Hispanic immigrants at the border. Like, they're all coming across unvaccinated. But when it comes to regular law-abiding people from other countries, now there's rules and regulations to where they come. But if you sneak in, you're good. <laughs> but if you try and do it the right way, you got to get the procedure. It makes no sense. Meanwhile, here at home, COVID vaccine mandates are fueling even more showdowns nationwide. Protect medical freedom! With new fears they could make already. We need a my body, my choice slut walk. That'll win. The critical work shortages even worse. I guarantee you at least half the department staying home comes Saturday morning. In Chicago, thousands of police officers backed by their union are threatening not to come to work tomorrow. They're protesting the mayor's order, requiring all city employees to report their vaccination status by tonight. If those who are sworn to uphold the law act as if they're above the law. So we already spoke about these vaccine mandates in Chicago and what they're doing to the police force. Um, a lot of these guys are willing to walk off because they're like, hey, it's not even worth it. Like these dudes are out here wilding. We don't have enough resources as it is. The mayor doesn't support us. So why are we even a part of this? And they have a great point. Like there needs to be like all of these guys need to get together and organize some type of, you know, video platform where they can share their thoughts and share their minds on the situations that's occurring out there in Chicago because it's extremely important to hear it from the guys who are actually involved in it. But, you know, I know they're busy and they can't really talk about um, certain things while they're on the force. But, hey, if they get relieved from the force, then I would like I would love to see some of these guys come together and and, you know, you know, give people a piece of, uh, of their mind and of what's going on. And, you know, as far as the legal process goes and how many repeat offenders they end up seeing. We're not going to tolerate that. That's not acceptable. It's happening as the city sees a surge in violence. Murders up over last year. The governor offering up the National Guard in case of a massive police no-show. While in If the National Guard goes into Chicago, to imagine how it'll be a war zone. It'll be Iraq all over again. And, you know, the National Guard, they're not really used to policing. And it's going to get physical, I think. Seattle, police are facing a showdown of their own. Any loss of an officer right now would be detrimental to our city's current public safety crisis. The force is required to show. And y'all already know what happened in Seattle. They were the main ones who defunded and and, and allowed the lawlessness. Y'all know they had the, the Chaz, um, I guess, perimeter downtown where they basically, <laughs> they basically took over the city. You know, these, these random protesters slash rioters and and they had a showdown out there and and you know the police are just starting to gain a footing back in those territories but hey these mandates i mean we all know the democrats want to see a purge i've already said it um the democrats want a purge to go down and it's pretty scary no proof of vaccination by monday but so far more than 200 officers have not complied the police department already dealing with a crime wave, activating their emergency plan, even asking detectives to go out on street patrol. Our first concern is those priority one calls, those crime, crime in progress calls and whatnot, and having the staffing levels available to respond. So they basically said, don't call us for nothing else. Don't call us for anything else unless 
something is happening to you. Meanwhile, at America's airports, 40% of TSA agents have not reported their vaccination status. The deadline, just a month away. While thousands of pilots are still unvaccinated too, with mandates looming, including American Airlines, which is requiring all pilots to be vaccinated by November 24th. It's back. Mm, 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 mm. Woo. And I seen, I seen Southwest, I think they, um, they reneged and they said, you know, we're not going to do it, but there's, there's a lot of pressure coming from the Biden administration. Just don't comply. Quite frankly, that's just what the people have to do. What, what everybody has to do, just don't comply. And, you know, if you get fired over it, Hey, we need an organization. We need to come together, but I know some people are going to go ahead and take it which is you know it is what it is but people shouldn't be forced if you're if you have your convictions and you don't want to be forced to do something man i stand with you vaccination or termination we've got some 3900 pilots now that uh are in the process of making that choice or not or going for the exemption that's a lot of pilots and tonight new warnings that unless this gets sorted out it could significantly impact the holiday travel season <laughs> And now to a frightening video here you'll only see on Wow. Did you see that woman dumping? <laughs> and now to a frightening video here you'll only see on Local 10 News. A homeowner fighting back and getting into a shootout with three dog robbers. The crooks claimed they wanted to buy the victims expensive French bulldogs, but that's when it all took a very scary and violent turn. These dudes is trying to rob puppies now. And what if the puppies got caught in the crossfire? I mean, brothers, I, I, I guess this is a hustle. Honestly, you could just buy your own pups and breed them. It's not that hard to get in the game. These dudes act like they don't have a thousand, you know, thousand bucks together. A few of you guys put a couple thousand dollars, get a male and a female and breed them. But they want to take it. They want to take something that's not theirs. They want to violate somebody else's ownership. Like, man. Local 10 Sanella Sabovic is live now with our exclusive tonight. Sanella. Well, Calvin, this video is pretty wild. The woman was simply trying to sell two dogs that she breeds that act nearly cost her her life. The entire ordeal was caught on camera. The people responsible remain on the run this evening. It was like a scene out of a movie, a gun battle over pricey exotic dogs. This woman, in fear for her and her girlfriend's life, is forced to fire after a group of young men start shooting at her. A bullet narrowly... Yo, why is she shooting it like that? ...misses her head, and she ducks behind her car for cover. We got a knock on the door. I noticed one of the people's faces. The three young men you can clearly see in this ring video went to the woman's West Park home around 7.30 Monday night. She breeds exotic dogs. Look at these dudes, man. Oh, I told you about the short dread dudes. Short dread brothers is on demon time. <laughs> Video went to the woman's West Park home around 730 Monday night. She breeds exotic dogs and she figured they were there to inquire. Look at those sweethearts. Oh my God. Inquire about them. She noticed something seemed a bit off and asked. What the hell is going on right here? As soon as I turn around, that's when when he grabbed me and then his boys got all frantic. One of the men then grabbed the woman holding her. She swagged out. She got the Versace. Okay, I see she got good taste. You know what I'm saying? At gunpoint, there was a struggle. And as soon as I turned around, he went and um, the other guy that was standing here went and put his, go to put his arm around me, put the gun to my head. And then I started screaming, trying to like wiggle myself out. They were like trying to drag her out. I don't know for what reason. They had her by her neck, trying to drag her out with the gun to her head. The trio take off with two exotic micro bullies, similar to the dogs you see here. Dang. So they got two of them. Wow. They are worth about $4,000 each. The robbers don't leave quietly either. $4,000 for some puppies.
I mean, she got jugged. She got jugged. They shoot at the woman, and that's when she goes into her home to grab her gun. I would have done anything to protect my girlfriend in my home, and my biggest goal was to just make sure that she was okay and we live to see tomorrow. So BSO investigator. Guys, I mean, if y'all trying to do online vending and all that kind of stuff, selling pubs online, I get it. That's a good hustle. Um, you want to meet in a public place, okay? You don't want to meet them at your home, you know? It's crazy. Investigators say this woman was defending her home, so she will not face any charges here. They also tell me that there are four people responsible for. Dang, she got folks pulling up all day. It's a nice whip too. For this crime, three that you saw on camera, and one person was apparently the getaway driver. So investigators need help from the public this evening. If you recognize those men in the surveillance video that we showed, give BSO a call, or you can remain anonymous. And Dang, they still pulling up. Call Broward Crime Stoppers at 954-493-TIPS. We're reporting live this... Dang, so she is the puppy plug. Everybody know her. This evening, Sonella Sabovic, Local 10 News. The man accused of killing a seven-year-old girl and also wounding her sister goes before a judge today. Prosecutors just filed murder charges last night against the man they once let go. CBS 2's Mugo Digway joining us live in our Streetside studio with the latest update on this case. Good so remember, guys, um, we did this story on the young, uh, I think it was an 11-year-old and a 7-year-old who got shot. The 7-year-old did not survive. Um, but they finally got the guy, and it looks like they're going to serve him, which this is Chicago, so we know how that goes. Good morning, Mugo. Yeah, good morning, Audrina and Ryan. So you may remember this case. It happened back in August as the mother of the two little girls was putting them into a parked car. So here's a picture of those girls. Seven-year-old Serenity Broughton on the left died. Her sister, six-year-old Aubrey, survived. Yesterday, police picked up this man, 24-year-old Ariam Luster, of, from the basement, rather, of his grandmother's home in Riverside. Poli so grandma was harboring him. Grandma was keeping them safe. I mean, come on, Grandma. You got to do better. He, he killed a baby. He killed a baby, Grandma. I mean, what is up with these dudes? You can see it in his eyes. He's on demon time. Police had arrested Luster earlier this month, but Cook County prosecutors declined charges, so he was let go. Right now, so they arrested him earlier this month. They let him go. It's Cook County, Chicago. Kim Fox, prosecutor. Y'all know. I mean, <laughs> come on, G. My man's is looking at the camera like, yeah, I did it month, but Cook County prosecutors declined charges, so he was let go. Right now, police have not said what new evidence helped them secure charges this time, but Superintendent David Brown says he's hoping the charges bring some relief to the Broughton family. These charges of the, are the beginning, we hope, of bringing some measure. You see, we hope. He says we hope. I mean, this, this guy, he's not even sure if they're going to be able to stick this on him all the way of closure to the grieving family of these two innocent little girls who were sitting in a parked car when they were struck by gunfire so luster will be in bond court this afternoon meantime detectives are asking for the public's help in finding the second gunman and the getaway driver we're live in our street side studio mugo digway cbs tune in and that local breaking news out of Chesterfield, where these two parents are facing charges after their young son's body is found in a freezer at their home. Police found the child's remains after getting a tip. They believe the boy had been in the deep freeze for more than a year. Wow. Enzo Domingo is live in the neighborhood tonight after speaking with police and neighbors to get more details on this. And Enzo, what have you discovered? Well, good evening, uh, Kurt and Makia. Actually, neighbors didn't want to say too much because right now they're worried. You know, both parents, Cassine and Dina Weaver, they were charged, but currently they're both out on bond. Wow. So these folks had their kid in the deep freezer for over a year, 
and they're, they, they got a bond. That's crazy. A horrific discovery at a home on Lookout Point Circle. And this is a black man, so it's like... I don't see the racist criminal justice system they talking about. We just did a story on another brother getting out after being charged with or after being suspected of shooting a seven year old girl. Like, come on, and an 11 year old. The body of a boy under the age of five found in a freezer where he had been for almost two years. This is the first time I've seen anything like this. Now the parents of Aleel Weaver, Cassine and Dina are facing charges. Chesterfield police first got a tip of the remains back in May, and that's when they finally secured a warrant and searched the home. The Weaver's front door still damaged from the raid. I couldn't believe it. I, not, not in this neighborhood. Just could not believe it. Neighbor Colin Brown says Cassine Weaver had always been a nice neighbor, but Dina often kept to herself, and that the pair had a second son. Another neighbor adds that the two boys were homeschooled. Brown watched the May incident unfold from his home, just a few yards away. We saw him bring a truck down here. Dang, I mean, he better be careful because if they got Bond and this guy is back out, I mean, sheesh. And pull the uh, freezer out of there and that put it on the truck. I'm like, what in the world are they doing? You know, what's in the truck? Police say they had help from specialists from the office of the chief medical examiner because the body may have been frozen for close to two years. It took a little bit of time to actually all things that way they could actually do the work that they needed to do to help wow they had to thaw that child out what in the world and then they had they had two kids so one of the kids sees his brother get put in the freezer during a homeschooling session i guess i mean imagine the fear in that other child Help us try to determine the cause and manner of death in this case. Both parents face charges of conspiracy to conceal a body and failing to render aid to a child, but Cassine was additionally charged with domestic assault and malicious wounding of a woman that he knows. Police tell me that woman was Dina. Now back live out here now on Lookout, Lookout Point Circle. Now Major Louth says that after the final autopsy report is released, police are going to review that with the Commonwealth's attorney to figure out if the parents are going to be facing any more charges. In the meantime, we're live and on your side in Chesterfield County. Enzo Domingo, NBC 12. Charges brought against one of the two people arrested for a child's death earlier this year. I'm Julie Bragg. Thanks for joining us here at 5. And I'm Leland Pinder. The charges come after police say the couple's youngest child was found in a freezer at their Chesterfield home. Our Cameron Thompson's live at the Chesterfield court complex with more. Cam, what'd you learn today? Well, uh, and Julie and Leland, these new charges against the father in this case came by way of grand jury indictments and Cassine Weaver now facing felony murder, felony child abuse, neglect and aggravated malicious wounding. Again, all of this related to the discovery of that child's body in a freezer at their house that the police say was their youngest child. So he basically beat the child to death. Man, what a piece of, you know what I mean? The wife also facing charges in this case. Now, these new charges came at the end of a hearing today on those. Look at that. Adorable. Those original charges for a preliminary hearing. And in this hearing, prosecutors either null prost or set aside some of the charges and then tried to prove po probable cause for the remainder. They had two detectives briefly describe a tip and the discovery of the body, but the defense argued and the judge agreed that they did prove probable cause to move forward in the case. And so the remaining charges were dismissed without prejudice. But at the end, that's when those new indictments were served and Weaver, who has been out on bond, was arrested and taken taken to jail. Now, afterwards, Weaver's attorney said that they are glad the judge agreed with their arguments today, but they are now taking on these new charges, which they deny. I asked him if he could explain why the body was found in that freezer, and he said that's something they'll be discussing in court. This is CBS 6 legal analyst Ed Riley on how things played out today. What they did was not wrong or, or improper in any way. And it's not it's not always done that way, uh, but it's not uncommon uh, to indict somebody after a preliminary hearing such as this 
Uh, it's just they don't always have it ready to, to hand the indictments to them. Now, again, Weaver was out on bond, is in jail now, and will spend the weekend in jail, and will have a bond hearing next week in circuit court. I mean, I'm just struck. These guys still got a bond. I mean, jeez. Court. Meanwhile, Dina Weaver, the wife in this case, has a hearing scheduled for next week as well, but again, on the original charges that she was arrested. Gang violence and other kind of violence. So it is what it is.